The Trail of Katowice Murals. The mural, Kutz na Kutsu, was painted at Yuel Vipochinkova 3, Shoponitsa. The author of the image on the basis of which he painted the mural was Erwin Sufka. Authors of the mural were Daniel Walerski and Wukash Zasadny. Along the Katowice mural trail, we will be guided by Ms. Barbara Zygmanska and Mr. Piotr Fuglevich, authors of Walking Guide of Katowice. Mr. Piotr, what does this mural dedicated to Kazmier Kutz? Mr. Piotr said, A mural dedicated to Kutz presents Kazmier Kutz on a pony. Interestingly, the name Kutz, written by TZ Kazmier Kutz, changed his name because he originally called Kutz by Sea. The painting was painted by one of the most full of enthusiasm creator from the Yanov group. It was Irvin Sufka. The main theme of the works, Irvin Sufka, were a naked woman. He loved women, as well as a feminine axe in the background of industrial architecture. On the mural, Kutz is riding a horse. It hovers over the painting Narrow Gauge Industrial Railway in zinc plant in Szeponitsa. These are the same ones Dr. Vodovska crew rescuing children. The building of management, otherwise known as the Uthenmann building, it still exists today and it's being refurbished right now. So the image shows the most important for Szeponitsa buildings. Several railway poles which can be seen on the mural have survived. Visitors can still find them. The railroad was raised above the surface so as to not interfere with traffic. Kutz hovers over this Shoponitsa, which until 1959 was a separate city and a separate commune. Kutz came from a simple family, which was not alien to art and culture. This family was run by women, mostly his grandmother. His mom made him read, that's why he read a lot. Kashmir really wanted to get out of Silesia and finally did it. He was a young man speaking the Silesian language, which at that time was called noise. He moved to Woods because he has low growth and had shortcomings in cultural education, and to Woods people from wealthy families were extremely ambitious and extremely hardworking. He had to stand out, and he did. He made some very avant-garde films that are a little bit forgotten today. Back then, they were part of a film of a new wave that was creative in parallel to France. For example, in Warsaw, he stayed amidst elite company. We can see him, for example, at Daigat Salons in the film about Kalina Jandruzic, which is currently in the cinemas. Kutz is in crisis, middle-aged. He's already had his accomplishments. He's got what he wanted. But it didn't work. He's back in Silesia. He said he had a dream about his first film. We are talking about the first film from the well-known Silesian trilogy. When he woke up, he wrote the dream and then he filmed it. Salt of the Black Earth has become an extremely recognizable film that showed Silesia, the rest of Poland, in a beautiful and artistic way. Salt of the Black Earth became the first film in the trilogy and actually the sixth book because, in addition to the trilogy, other films were made. However, these three films were stylistically similar. Kust has become a kind of evangelist of Silesia. He became a senator of the Republic of Poland and constantly promoted Silesia very strongly, always remembering his roots. Szeponitsa, where he was born and raised, where his land of childhood was its place, to which he could return. Not all had this opportunity. At the end of his life, he turned out to be also a very distinguished writer, in addition to the scripts, he wrote Fifth Side of the World, published in the Literary Publishing House. It met with a great reception of readers, and, on its basis, at the Silesian Theatre, he had there was a spectacle. Is it played to this day? I don't know if he's still here. Lecturer said, It's playing, Mr. Piot said. It is played to this day, a performance with the same title. He also met with a very good reception by the viewers. Kutz left a legacy and a message, and I think that in Silesia it is a significant cultural and intellectual revival, which in some way caused by his activity and his work motives. Lecturer said, Remaining in the subject of Silesia, on the occasion of the 100th anniversary of the Silesian uprisings, 
a mural commemorating Captain Robert Oshek, was built. It is located on the rear wall of the tenement house at Obronse Westerplatte 35. The author of this work is Wojtek Walczyk. Captain Robert Oshek was an officer of the Polish Navy and was the commander of the Third Silesian Uprising. Miss Barbara said, To begin with, the author of this mural is Wojtek Walczyk, i.e. the same artist who created the mural with Korfante. The artist specializes in murals, specifically heroes. Robert Oshek is truly a remarkable character and is very interesting. He was called to the German Navy and he studied from 1912 to 1914 at a renowned maritime university. And then the First World War broke out. He's been assigned to the crew, armored cruiser Blutcher. He was directed to navigational school in Alton. There, he assumed the position of a deck officer of a destroyer. He commanded that destroyer to the end. The First World War and after the First World War, the reborn Polish state. Then he applied to the Polish Navy. The Polish state did not have the naval fleet, but it had a river fleet that operated in the waters of Pripyat. It was Oshek who became the commander of Pinsk fleet, who fought on the Soviet troops, and his victory in the river battle of Chernobyl reopened the way for Piłsudski to Kiev. He deserved it as a sailor. There was also a plebiscite in the upper Silesia. Oshek returned to Silesia and became the leader of a group he created. He created groups of sailors who during the Silesian uprisings fought on land. Yet they fought in naval uniforms. Oshek was sent directly to the protection of Korfante. Together with engineer Wozniak, he designed an armored car which was called Korfante and who took an active part in the fights and under St. Anne's Mountain in time three of Silesian uprising. There are still photos of Oshek standing with his sailor team in the background of the armored car Korfante. Mr. Piot said, Oshek, after the end of the Silesian uprising, ceased to be a soldier. As it was in other countries, they got something from you. In the case of Silesian insurgents, you got a newsreel, which means have been given the right to trade in tobacco. With one of his army buddies, Oshek ran to a wholesaler in Khoshuf. He became the president of the Union Tobacco Traffickers. Members were mostly insurgents. He had a normal life, quite young, and he happened to spend all night in a restaurant. On one such night, it ended badly because he was drunk. An industrialist from Katowice started the attack. Oshek unhooked him. But that man was very strong. The man who attacked him fell, hit his head on the ground, and died. Oshek went to prison for this act. And after a while, it was decided that it was self-defense, and he was released from prison. Unfortunately, in 1938, he died of cancer at just 40 years of age. He buried in a military cemetery in Katowice. He got a nice tombstone. Sometimes commemorative ceremonies are held there, lecturer said. Biographies of characters immortalized on murals. They hide interesting stories. And in the next episode, we move to Bogochitsa. Thank you to my guests and goodbye. This project is funded by government budgets. The podcasts have been read by Braden Buddy.